Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily chat. This is episode number 551. And the topic today is the curse of the high achieving woman. <laughs> this is not a fairy tale, it's actually an experience that some women go through. So I'll explain that in a moment. And I presume, because I don't know the script yet, um, I'll offer up some solutions. Before I do that, excuse me, still getting over this. Uh, if you watched my broadcast last week, you know I had a pretty heavy head cold. Apparently the the remains are still clearing out, so occasionally I get a little bit of a clearing, <laughs> what a better word. Anyway, before I jump into that, let me introduce myself and let you know what this is about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women, high-achieving women, find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, and every day... I was going to say every day for the last two years, but it's not every day, but it's every day for probably the last 19, 20 months, and I've been going for two years now, because it was December 2016 when I started. I do these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's topic is, in a way, the precursor to the last two days. I'm realizing I've done it backwards in a way. Because I spoke yesterday about, um, if you remember the titles, the price. I'm not sure now, if I remember, but, but basically the last two days have been specifically around this high achieving woman description. I thought I better start, I better explain now what I'm talking about because I've been using aspects, but now I think today I'll go into much more detail. I, well, at least I believe I will. Because again, I just write the titles. I don't have scripts or planning ahead when I do these, they just come through. So the topic today is the curse of the high achieving woman. And I mean this from the point of view of the price she pays, not the price other people might pay. Although that might come up as well, we'll see. So, um, as you can probably tell, I'm not a high achieving woman. <laughs> so I'm speaking from obs observation, not from experience. Although I've dated some women like that. So I've had certain experiences um, that I want to talk about at this point. But I have observed for quite a few women I've, I've known and worked with as clients, um, there is a, a common thread that I've become aware of. And some of these things may resonate for you, some of them may not. But if you are a high achieving woman, this will reason, resonate for you, I'm sure. First of all, um, and I'm not sure if these are in, in any order, I'll know when I finish if I'm in any order or not, because these are coming through as they come through, is there's a distinct, um, how put it this way, there's a distinct drive to achieve. The high achieving woman is literally achieving highly, which means they are driven by a vision, a focus, a mission. And in some cases, that vision is something that has been come from a higher power or from a deeper place or from another um, resource center. Or it might be something just simply they've done for themselves because they were so against being something else and actually been driven by an, a, a reaction to past experiences in their lives. And this is one of the exposés, by the way, where women were not respected as much. So for some women, being high achieving is almost out of revenge or reaction to what they were told when they were younger by men or by other women. Like, you can't do that, you're not good enough, you're not this, you're not that. And it's kind of like the one will, some women will go, I'll prove you wrong. And they do that. So that's one sliver, it's one piece, not the only one by any means. But it's one piece of what the um, high achieving woman is, I won't say the origin story, but it's the, um, sometimes what seeds, or plants the seeds that help them get where they're going. Second part is definitely a sense of, um, having to go it alone. And this is why my work's been so important to my clients, is for a lot of the women I've worked with who are high achieving women, they've been pretty lonely. And in fact, I think for a lot, large number of high achieving women, that's the case. Partly because there's a lack, there's an, there's an I won't say inability, but there's a lack of desire to trust other people because they've got to do it themselves. They've got to get through, make it happen, and, 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 and um, not survive as much as, or thrive in a way but achieve, again, high achieving woman. The achievement thing is a big piece of the driving force for women who want to succeed. And because the world isn't designed for women that way, it's much harder. So first of all, was for, for sidebar, I, want to, I would like to give deep reverence and props and honor to women who have been high achievers in the past because you didn't have it easy. You know, men can achieve in some ways a little bit easier. It's competitive, but it's a men's playing field. When women enter that field with their high heels on and their, and their 
hair made up and all their their um, feminine accoutrements, it's much more challenging for them to to well basically play dirty as some of the men have to do, because the business struck the business world is not a fair playing field. First of all, between men and women, it's also not a fair playing field for anybody because it's a <laughs> the word that came up was corrupt, but it ha- the lot of a lot of parts of the business arena are in fact corrupt because they're about money, not about people. And this is one of the reasons why I feel, in particular for women who are high achieving women, that they're being their souls are being sapped out of them, their hearts are being drained, because the vision that they hold perhaps maybe one that's more humanity based and more collaborative based. But what they're actually having to do is sacrifice all of that to achieve. And it seems to me, from what I've witnessed with women I've known, that the higher up they go in this achieving um, paradigm, the more, I gotta say it, I didn't want to, but I gotta say it, the more soulless they seem to become. Now, I'm not saying they've lost their soul, but they end up having to become so contained and contracted energetically to be able to do what they're doing to be and it's funny it's almost an inverse they're going to be so big to succeed and thrive and be successful but they're going to contain their feminine freedom energy life vivaciousness all that juice so they start looking they start to become very stiffened and atrophied and frankly um defeminized if that's a word i can use I did call it the, uh, as one of my friends um, back in October, Deborah called it the uh, masculinization of women. This is part of that. When women are doing these things in the world that are b- more business centric, because that's the, that's the arena most women are achieving in, and even political, I would say, in the political arena too. So many women I've seen in the political arena, if you watch on TV, watch them in interviews, you'll see them look like this. They've become incomplete because what they've done is they're, they're, they've, they've actually had to or at least they believe they've had to let me put it that way yes they believe they've had to give up their feminine freedom to fit into this structure and to become successful so that achievement is at a very high price and one of the, another part of the price they pay because they've had to de- disconnect and almost um, hide away their heart their soul their spirit all those beautiful parts of them it makes relationships extremely challenging. Romantic relationships. Oh, they can go have sex anytime they want. And probably they do, same as the men do. It's the one night stand syndrome because there's no connection. And for most high achieving women, the ability to connect intimately, to have sensuous connection, to actually feel um, immersed in somebody else in a, in a joyful, exploring, wonderful way, eludes them because they've turned those skills off. Or should say they subdued those skills almost beaten into submission so they could thrive and survive in that format. And I'm saying it's a shame, but it's more than that. It's 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 a calamity in a way because the amount of women who have forgotten how to be fully feminine is I want to say the amount, the proportion I'd say, maybe the percentage, I'm sure I'm gonna throw these numbers out there without having no, any fact spacing and backing up just you know I'm not being like I've been studying this and researching this. But my feeling is that the majority, I'll do, I'll do that, of women I know who have been out in the business world for so long and in corporate have disenfranchised themselves. They've disconnected from their feminine heart, so their ability to date, to be in a relationship, to actually connect on a heartfelt level eludes them because they're so caught up in the, um, the trap of acting like the men. High-achieving women, it's, it's like we don't talk about high-achieving men as much because men just achieve because they're competing and that's what men do. It's the business world. It's designed for them. But women are the rarity, so they become high achieving women because it's a it's like oh look it's like the the it's the it's that um, rare of the species, the high achieving woman, and I'm saying it sarcastically, but the truth is, it is something that is not built for women. To be honest, it's not designed for women to succeed and thrive and and have what they want. So let me cut, let me shift into that for a moment. I'm going to be careful how I say this because again, this is not fully formed yet. So again, this is a, this is the origin story or the precursor to what I did yesterday and the day before. So this is a three-part, out of sequence series of talks. Um, a part of what I want to speak to is some things that we, as a human race, not me as we as men, but we as a human race, are desperately in, desperately in need of, which is you amazing high achieving women, 
is to stand in that truth whilst you open up that um, that safe you can be carrying on locked up and let out your your joy, your heart, your libido, your feminine energy, your your joyfulness, your sensuality, your connection. So it's almost as if you've achieved the goal to get to that plateau, that level of achievement. Now if you express yourself in your feminine at that point safely and without losing ground from where you've gotten to, because you worked very hard to get there, I understand that. You could bring a whole new level of connection and leadership to the planet, to the humanity that we've been missing for a long time. I have a vision I'm keep, I keep getting glimpses of. I don't have it articulated enough or clear enough to express it here, but absolutely something I'm very aware of that there's a um, there's a shift that's a shift that's needed, a big one, and a large part of that shift is requiring the um, the involvement. That's not the right word. There's another word for that. What would it be? the ownership and expression of feminine authority and leadership in the world from the feminine heart of all these high achieving women. That's about as clear as I can make it right now. There's a lot more to come on this. This is this purely, a, again, another seed that's coming forward as part of this conversation that I've been, well, mostly having it here, but I want to put it out here for you as well. This is something that I know is gonna upset some people. <laughs> and that's fine with me because I've been spoiling for the. I mean, same as I've been spoiling for a fight, but I've been been talking about this for a while, and I, I want to make it more public. And I was having conversations last night at a social gathering that supported what I was saying, so I felt um, encouraged. So, um, I'm not sure what else I want to say about that. That pretty much sums it up. I am offering, as of as of the last two in this broadcast as well, a feminine leadership discovery session. It's something different from my usual um, relationship coaching sessions. And ladies, if you're interested in that, I'll, offer, I'll put it in the comments so you can sign up for that if you want. It's a, it's a complimentary conversation just to see for where you are and where you want to go and if I can assist you in that journey. Yes, it's really weird. I know it sounds like it's very weird to have a man talking about feminine leadership. Trust me, I've had people ask me that a lot. And the truth is I've learned enough over the last 11 years in particular, but really over my whole life, just how much power the feminine carries and how few men are talking about it. So this one's steady up and saying something about it. Um, so again, I'll put the link in the comments for that. If you wish to reach out and have a conversation, you can do so. I invite that. This is a Facebook Live, by the way, so any um, comments and questions you have afterwards, please put them below. Also, when it goes onto YouTube, you can do it on YouTube as well. Um, and I do invite your questions and comments because this may well provoke some things, which is fine. There's more coming, but I don't feel it's re I don't think it's it's, it's um, done yet to speak about it. So maybe tomorrow. Speaking of which, um, this is a daily Facebook Live I do. Um, first on Facebook, and it goes on to my YouTube channel, then there's my podcast, I'll give you the links for that. And I will be doing it again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, that's my daily commitment. And that'll be 5.52, something in the same arena, I suspect, we'll see what it is. So in terms of replays, this is again my Facebook Live that I do on my personal page, and then I share it onto my business page afterwards, where all of these live. If you go to my web, uh, my business page, which is barryselby.author, on Facebook, you find it there. And then if you're a YouTube viewer, feel free to subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby. And once you're subscribed to my channel, you can find a playlist there called Messages for the Masculine, which is where these all live. And you watch the replays there, you can comment suggest, and, and uh, post things there as well. And thirdly, I'm, post, I'm building out my podcast, which is also called Messages for the Masculine, on iTunes. You can subscribe, subscribe to that and also download the audios. So you can listen to them when you're driving, riding, exercising, doing other things where you can't look at your phone. And uh, I'm here to help. I'm here to support, I'm here to serve. I hope this has been of value to you. This has been something that has been on my mind for a while. I want to start talking about it. So this is part three. Even though it's part one in the series, it's out of order. Watch the previous two broadcasts, it'll make sense. With that, I'll see you again tomorrow. You take care of yourselves and uh, there's more to come. So ladies, if, you're a, if you are indeed a high achieving woman, how's your heart doing? How's your soul and spirit doing? If that's where you're feeling a bit crunchy, a bit challenged, a bit dried out, a little bit limited, that's where I'm inviting you to reach out to me. Again, the link will be in the comments. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves and uh, yeah, have a wonderful evening. Bye.